Welcome to New Life 365. This is yet again another beautiful day, and I thank you guys for joining us on this 365-day journey to some of the most fantastic and unbelievable teaching that you've ever heard. Now over the next several days we're going to be talking about a very specific topic of tithing and offering and giving. Unfortunately in the church business today there's a lot of deals that are made that concern the tithing and the offering and giving and unfortunately a lot of churches are teaching things that may not necessarily be New Testament principles in order to try to force people to give when in all reality New Testament principles actually open doorways and passageways for people to give more and more and more. Now I'm sorry for offending but unfortunately when you read the Word of God sometimes its truth is so deep and enlightening that it blows our socks off and what we're left with is just the ultimate reality of the way things are. So I want you to be blessed as we dive into this. If it's alright with you, I would like to go to the Old Testament and I know that that's few and far in between these days, but Malachi chapter 3 is the essence of what we're trying to accomplish. It's the, it's the most popular passage as it relates to the tithe that churches today are digging out of the Bible and teaching to their congregants. And I'm going to do it today also. I'm going to dig it out of the Bible and I'm going to teach it to all you guys who are watching over the internet. Malachi chapter 3 starting in verse 6. God specifically and explicitly states, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offering. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. That there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all nations will be called blessed for yours will be delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Now many of you know that just a couple weeks ago Ron Kennedy was involved with the machine. And just a couple weeks ago I was inside the box of the natural flow of the church order. And just a couple of weeks ago, I would have stood behind my pulpit in my church and I would have preached a very similar message to this. I would have told you, well, if you don't pay your tithes, if you don't bring offering, if you don't do this, that, and the third, you are bringing a curse down on yourself. But let me tell you right now, you are not going to be cursed for not bringing a tithe, and you are not going to be cursed for not bringing an offering. If you go back and you study the law of tithing and you study the law of offering, you will discover that this is a very specific law that the grace of Jesus Christ has set us free from. Now I say that to say this. Moving forward to the gospel, we find Jesus does teach on a similar principle of tithing, but he doesn't get into tithing. As a matter of fact, he doesn't put a number on it, but he just explicitly states that we have to do something immaculate. If you go to Luke chapter 6, I want to go into discovery mode, and I want to read, we're going to start in verse 27, and we're going to read through 36. Now, what I want you to hear is just how awesome this thing really can be. Now, before I get into this, let me tell you this. Just because I said that you're not under a curse if you don't tithe, and just because I said you're not under a curse if you don't give an offering, does not mean that you shouldn't support your local church. It doesn't mean that when the basket or the plate or whatever goes around, you shouldn't put in a percentage of your weekly income. As a matter of fact, I make it a principle in my life to continue to go by the tithing idea. And, and don't you know I continue to be blessed by that, but... Then in my own life, I also kick it up another notch and I allow the teachings of Jesus Christ to transform my giving. Watch what he says. He says, if, if you love those 
who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect payment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, accepting, expecting, excuse me, to be paid in full. But Jesus says, love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting anything back. He's talking about giving. Earlier on in the passage, he says, give to everyone who asks you, and anyone who takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Are you hearing the wonderful teaching? He says, then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. On down in the passage, He explicitly, expressly, He expressly talks about this idea. He says, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. That's, that's a simple doctrine that we all need to put into effect. Do not make fun of this person over here, and you're not going to be made fun of. But then he goes into this idea, forgiven, you'll be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, no, we should not be coming to church expecting to give a tithe and give an offering. That is not necessarily what church is all about, even though there are people who will stand behind their pulpits and tell you that you have to give tithes, you have to give offerings, blah, 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 blah. But on the flip side of this thing, Jesus says, give, and it will be given to you. Now that goes right back to what Malachi said, except Jesus doesn't use the word tithe. He uses the word give. And a gift is something that you freely give of yourself. A tithe is a requirement by a law, but a gift, a giving heart, just freely and abundantly, just overflows continually. You know, that's what Jesus wanted us to do. He wanted to abolish all of the requirements and have us come freely with gifts. And he says, with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Jesus changed the wording of Malachi in order to show us that it's about our hearts and our lives and our minds and how we're doing things, not so much about how we have to do them. Jesus says, given it will be given to you. Malachi says, if you pay your tithes and offering in essence, listen, then, then the floodgates of heaven will open and He'll pour out a spiritual blessing on you that even your storehouse won't be able to, to hold together. Jesus says, give, and it will be given to you. Give what? Give of yourself. Give of your finances. Give of your car. Give of your home. Give of your family. Give of everything that you possibly can give of because in your giving there is blessing. In your giving, there in turn will be receiving. But then again, we go further than that by knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is not so much about giving and receiving. It's just about giving. I only have $100 in the bank. And, and my finances are broken. And, and blah, 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 blah. And I, and I know that times are tough. Believe me. I know. And I've dealt with that before in my life. I've dealt with times when, when I, just, I just couldn't seem... I just couldn't seem to to find a way out of this great chasm that had befallen me and I just I just couldn't seem to find a way around this this great struggle that had been put in my life so to speak and but I want to tell you out of the abundance of my heart I gave and I gave and I gave not because a preacher told me I had to give 10% but because my heart says, give all that you have. Give everything that you can muster. Bring together your whole self, Ron, and throw it in this big pot. And you know, the next thing that came was theology degrees. The next thing that came was houses. The next thing that came was cars. The next thing that came was life and two beautiful, wonderful children to whom I adore with everything I have. And, and that wasn't because I paid my tithes. That was because I freely gave from a heart that cares for the need of others. That's because I did exactly what Jesus did. And that's the whole principle behind which Jesus came to this earth. He came in order to give us life, and He did it freely. Now, our responsibility is to usher in that same Spirit and freely give people who are hurting 
an opportunity not to hurt any longer. Maybe today while you're reading this, you're planning to go to church. It is after all Wednesday. And while you're sitting in church, you're, you're looking across the, the great vastness and the expanse of, of your sanctuary. And you see poor people as well as rich people. And you say to yourself, you know, when I leave church, I think I'm going to go get me a steak with the pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah for steak. As a matter of fact, if, if steak wasn't ever created, I don't think that I could exist. So we just all glory in the principle of steak as it relates to giving. We, we see this person and we say, well, you know, I'm going to go get a steak. Maybe I should get them one too. Maybe they're going home to eat one of those little packages of noodles that's been pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing into a bowl. You add water, tear open the 355,000 milligram of sodium package and pour it into your bowl and, and, and heat it in the microwave for six minutes and then take it out. Maybe throw some cheese in it to add flavor. If you're lucky, put a little, put a little garlic or something to give it that extra kick. But, but maybe they're having to go home to deal with that and, and so on and so forth. And you know, maybe, maybe I just need to take them with me. And that's the entire principle behind giving. As the offering plate comes by, you look into it and you say, Oh, well, the preacher has is, is already got a padded pocket. He's already got this, that, and the third. He's already got all his finances and we don't need to get... But you know, the church is so much more than just the preacher's finances. The church is taking care of people. One of the greatest things about Live Fire Community Church is its debt freeness And we always talk about how we are a debt-free church and how that's a, a great blessing. And our second church, which I believe will be coming in Mill Spring, North Carolina pretty soon, it's a great blessing how that will be a debt-free church also. And do you know what happens? Well, the money that comes in, it goes to help those who are hurting because we have the opportunity to be debt-free. There isn't so much of a big pastor's salary. What there is is there's an opportunity just to give and bless and overflow into someone's life. How many of you are overflowing into someone's life today? How many of you have taken the time to say, you know, I'm sick and tired of not helping. I'm going to help and I'm going to be a blessing.